Um, hello, everyone. This is the first of a couple of short videos that I'm going to be making, um, taking people through this book, Benedictine Daily Prayer, um, by uh, the monks of St. John's Abbey in Collegeville, Minnesota, compiled actually by a Lutheran oblate of St. John's Abbey, Maxwell Johnson. This is the second edition of Benedict in Daily Prayer. And um, there's a first edition as well, which is a slightly smaller book, slightly um, more flexible cover. But this is the second edition, Benedict in Daily Prayer. Uh, and some people have asked about um, how to use it, how to pray with it. Um, so I'm going to be doing, I guess, a couple of videos uh, to explain that. I'm. This isn't a professional sort of video setup. Uh, I don't have a script. Uh, I don't have uh, really a plan for what to do. I'm just going to kind of show you the book. Uh, in this first video, we're going to look at each of the sections of the book and um, kind of just what this book is for, what, what, what praying with a breviary is all about. So what is... Um, what is a breviary? A breviary is a book, a single volume or a few short books really designed to provide for a daily prayer throughout uh, the day, throughout the year, throughout the weeks. Um, Christian liturgical prayer, which means that there's a script. I'm sorry, I'm just going to get to the start of the section that I'm going to show you first. Um, it's a, a it's scripted prayer, which means that there's you know for every office for every uh, prayer time there's there's uh, there's a plan there's a, a written down formula for what you're going to pray. Um, if, I mean, if you want to, this is entirely up to you. But if you choose to pray with this uh, the liturgy of the hours, the office, this Benedictine office, um, this will allow you to do. Um, several times of prayer in every single day, all the way through the year, all the way through the liturgical year, all the major feast days, many of the major uh, saints, there's material in the back for saints, uh, and then every day of the week there are materials. So we'll, uh, we'll get to that in a minute, but just the big picture. So the Liturgy of the Hours, or the Daily Office, uh, this is this is uh, this is what this book is oriented around. This uh, stems from this particular book comes from the tradition of Benedictine monasticism, which means uh, communities of monks and nuns that follow the rule of Saint Benedict, which comes from the sixth century. He's kind of considered the founder of Western monasticism, uh, monasticism in the Western half of. Uh, Christianity, the Latin speaking half. Um, and of course, the Benedictine liturgy of the hours has given rise to, in the Roman Catholic Church, the liturgy of the hours. There's a, a four volume uh, contemporary set uh, of the liturgy of the hours, which is prayed by Roman Catholic lay people and clergy and many religious communities there. It's also the foundation for those of us who are uh, Episcopalian or Anglican, it's the foundation of our daily office uh, found in our prayer books, morning prayer and evening prayer, and maybe sometimes also Compline and noonday prayer as well. Uh, but this, the, the common thread through all of them is that there's prayer provided for different times of the day, all the way through the day, at set times during the day. So it's like you're marking the the hours of the day as they go past which is why it's called the liturgy of the hours it's it's uh different prayer times at different hours different appointed times of the day uh that take you all the way through the day and then there's stuff that uh gets varied depending on the day of the week other stuff that gets varied depending on the season of the year so things are different in lent than they are in christmas or uh right now ordinary time as we call it a uh, time when there isn't uh, a, a season really going on. And then other material that changes for individual feasts, you know, the feasts of saints or major events in the life of Jesus. So that's all that this book does. 
Now the book itself, you'll see that there's a number of ribbons in here and uh, I've ordered several copies of this now and I think the colors are consistent. So I will tell you uh, where to put your ribbons and I'll just refer to the blue ribbon or the burgundy ribbon or something like that. Uh, but the blue ribbon I've got set at something called the ordinary of the Liturgy of the Hours. And this is on page 807. And I always have my blue ribbon in the section called the ordinary, which is right in the middle of the book, as you can see, middle of the book. So the ordinary, uh, that, that is, uh, there's, there's lingo and slang all the way through this. The ordinary is the term that is used in liturgical stuff for, uh, for the kind of the core skeleton, the framework, the, the, the parts that, um, order the rest of it. Um, and so the ordinary of the liturgy of the hours is like the, the, the stuff in each hour that is more or less exactly the same for every time you sit down to pray one of the offices. Then there's other stuff in the rest of the book that moves around, that depends on the day of the week or the day of the year. But the ordinary is the stuff that, that doesn't change. It's, it's staying it's the same the whole way. And I'm starting here because this will allow us to do the first part, which is to uh, look at, not in detail, but just the names and what, what, uh, what they are in, in the sequence of the day, um, but the names of the offices themselves. So uh, those hours are uh, the hours that we talk about when we're talking about the liturgy of the hours begin with vigils. So this was originally the nighttime office prayed um, at midnight in some places in some religious communities, they get up at sort of three or four in the morning and pray vigils. It's, it's, uh, it's the longest of the offices. Um, and it is the one that I will can, uh, that I will encourage you to, to learn the last, the first one in, in the day and the solar day, you know, it's the first one that you would say after midnight, it's also the longest, most complicated. But there it is. That's page eight oh seven. We'll look at each of these in um, in some more detail later. After vigils comes the office of lauds, L A U D S, lauds, uh, which is morning. So this is you know sunrise or beginning of the day, six a.m. sort of time, and it is uh, it it comes from the fact that it it always includes in this tradition three Psalms, Psalm 148, 149, 150, which all begin, you know, praise, praise God. And so Lauds is, is uh, uh, the morning service uh, all about prayer and praise of God. So those are the first two, vigils and Lauds. Then we get to the, what they call the daytime offices. And there's three of those. They call them also sometimes the little offices because these are, three offices that are all short and said kind of designed to be said during the work day and as you'll see once you get into praying them for a week or so they're very regular uh for, for five out of the seven days of the week you say exactly the same prayers essentially every day you know tuesday wednesday thursday friday and saturday you're um you know, terse is, is the same kind of, it's going to be the same on every day of the week. Uh, so those daytime prayers are terse, sext, and known. And you might see just from the, you know, the, the letters in there, terse, sext, and known, if that sounds at all like third, sixth, and ninth, then you're getting somewhere because that's, uh, that's what these are sort of the hours after the start of the work day or the start of sunrise. So we talk on our clock, you know, uh, my, my watch counts from midnight. So the middle of the day from, or the mid morning for me is going to be like 10 AM. But for somebody who's gotten up and started counting their day from sunrise, the middle of the morning might be the third hour. If you start right at sunrise and three hours later, it's kind of like nine 30 or 10 ish, right? but that's the ninth hour or the, the, the third hour and the sixth hour. And then the ninth hour, basically in practice, what this corresponds to 
ideally is mid morning, 10, 10 30, midday. Sext is midday, so lunchtime, noon, 1 p.m. maybe. And known is the ninth hour of, of kind of the, the work day. So mid afternoon, three maybe, three or four. So terse, sext, and known. And eventually, you know, you can sprinkle these into your day as you find. Um, as you find the opportunity to do it. And each of those, they're relatively short and they're just meant to punctuate the day as you're at work with a little reminder of the, uh, of the presence of God. So we've got vigils and lauds, the morning offices, terse, sext, and known, the three daytime offices or the little offices. Then we get to evening time, vespers, uh, which is basically evening prayer in the Book of Common Prayer. And so Vespers is evening time, sunset, you know, end of your work day, uh, just before or just after dinner. And then finally, Compline or bedtime prayer. Complatorium was the original name, the completion of the day. And so this is the prayer that you pray at bedtime. Um, and it always includes a short confession. So those are the offices, and then you just wake up the next day, and you begin again with vigils. I moved the ribbon. You begin again with vigils. So that's what the ordinary is doing, is basically giving you the framework or the structure for a particular office. So that's beginning on page 807, the ordinary of the Liturgy of the Hours. The next section is the weekly Psalter. I'm beginning halfway through the book for a reason that I'll describe later on. The weekly Psalter. This is the second major section of the book. And the, it's called the weekly Psalter. The Psalter is the book of Psalms in the Bible. And the major reason why this is called the weekly Psalter is that what the daily offices are more than anything else is a system for praying through the Psalms. Monastic prayer, um, the liturgical prayer in the daily office tradition is essentially a way of getting us to pray the book of Psalms, uh, which is um, uh, anciently in the Christian tradition, even before the time of Jesus, the Psalms are the kind of the foundational spiritual text. And so what we have in this book is a four-week psalm plan, or uh, a four-week psalter, as we would say. But in fact, it's just the two-week cycle of the psalms. So you get through nearly all 150 psalms over the course of two weeks. But then there are some things that, that do vary uh, between the first time through and the third second time through a particular um, cycle. So what we wind up with is four weeks. Uh, but then weeks one and three have a lot in common, and weeks two and four have a lot in common. And you'll see that as you begin to, you know, after you pray through them over the course of four weeks, then you'll start to see what, what they have in common. And so what you have here, if you uh, look at like weeks one and three, um, is Sunday, the first day of the week, first Vespers. I'll talk more about first and second Vespers later, which is why I'm skipping it. But what did we have in the offices in the ordinary? You had vigils, lauds, terse, sext, and known, Vespers, and Compline, right? What we have here is Sunday, vigils, and then some, you know, uh, pages and pages of Psalms, and then Sunday, lauds, what would you expect to come next? Sunday, terse, right? Sunday, terse, and so on and so on. So all the way through weeks one and three, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and you can see all these up at the top. So you get all the way through to Saturday in weeks one and three. We're in Friday, weeks one and three. Here we go, Saturday lauds. 
and then eventually at the end of Saturday, then we get to weeks two and four. Again, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So at the very heart of it, what you could do as you're getting started is simply put your blue ribbon at the beginning of vigils if you want to, or lauds if you just want to start with lauds. I would advise that actually. Skip vigils for right now. <laughs> put your blue ribbon at lauds, page 814 and put your brown ribbon in week one, weeks one and three, of whatever day of the week it is when you're watching this. I'm recording this on Monday, um, so don't pay attention to how you figure out whether it's week one or week two or week three or week four. That'll come in a later video. For right now, just find week one of whatever day of the week it is. So week one, Monday, I need to scroll through, scroll, listen to me, it's like I'm on my phone. Scroll through to Monday, Lods. Scroll through to Monday, Lods on week one. So whatever day of the week it is that you're watching this, if it's Tuesday, scroll through until you find weeks one and three, Tuesday, Lods. You'll find Lods um, in the header at the bottom of the page. So put your brown ribbon there. Ignore all the other ribbons and just for a moment put Lods in the ordinary, page 814, and Lods of whatever day of the week it is. And then just focus on Lods and start reading through the ordinary. And anytime you see something in italics, that means you're probably going to flip from lauds the ordinary, the stuff that's the same every single time you pray lauds, until you find something in here that says Psalter, a respective day in the Psalter. And that's the point in one of these where you will flip to the respective day of the Psalter and say what it says there. So just, uh, I'm going to wrap this video up now because it's already gone 17 minutes. That's the starting point, just for the ordinary and the weeks of the Psalter. And we'll look at the other sections in a little bit, but give that a try. Grab your book, find Lauds, find Vespers maybe as a, the second thing to try, and find the respective day of the week, and just try to figure out when the ordinary tells you and it's usually in italics, and the ordinary will tell you the short reading. You need to find that somewhere else. Maybe go to the weekly Psalter Monday and see if there is a short reading. So there you go. Bounce back and forth between those two ribbons. The blue ribbon in the ordinary, brown ribbon in Weekly Psalter weeks one and three of whatever day of the week it is. Give that a try. Breathe. And remember that uh, that um, it'll take you maybe a month or two to figure out how to begin to pray with this book. And it'll be a lifetime practice of daily prayer that will bring you closer to God. That's enough for now. That'll be session one of this uh, that I'll wrap up. Next, I'll talk a little bit more about the other sections of the book and um, try and figure out how I get this published onto YouTube or something, because this is my very first video. So I've been uh, Chris Arnold. I'm a priest here in the Episcopal Diocese of Fond du Lac in Wisconsin, and this is just a, a very rough little uh, intro video on using this Benedictine Daily Prayer, the second edition, a short breviary. I hope it's helpful. Uh, I guess I'm leave comments. That's what I'm supposed to say, right? Leave comments if it's been useful. Uh, ask questions in the comments if I can help in some way. And uh, pray for me as I figure out how to do all of this stuff. So God bless you and God keep you. And um, let us with Benedict pray to the Lord our God. And that's all for now. Bye-bye.